Hi my pickles, my name is Sarah, Pearls of Wisdom and Food. Today's topic is hyper palatable foods. Do you know what those are? Well, maybe you don't know what the name of them are, but I bet you would recognize what the foods are. And so <laughs> I'm looking at the picture at the beginning of the article. Excuse me for slurping. I simply must show you. Do you know what that is? That is a hyper palatable food. It is a waffle filled with scrambled eggs, crumbled bacon, and dripping in what I'm sure is high fructose corn syrup, also known as log cabin. So hyper palatable is something that um, your brain thinks is desirable, but your body doesn't think it's very nutritious and um, filled with the good things. And what happens with your brain, as we've talked about here, is it lights up like a Christmas tree in the little reward part of the brain saying, I want more, I want more, because it is as addictive as opiates. And so, and we reward ourselves with it. Now, um, it says over a third of the global population is now overweight and percentages are increasing. Well, yeah, because it's the Americanization of the SAD, the Standard American Diet, or the Western Diet, as some people call it. And it's crap. I'm sorry, I hate that word. But it is. And if any of you are out shopping, you're seeing the devastation of hyperpalatable foods all over while they're shopping and they're swinging by. Now here's the dilemma. Or did I already say that and then I didn't say what the dilemma was? So you go to these um, holiday events that have all of these hyperpalatable items and and then that's one day, say that's a Friday night, and then Saturday you rush around like a banshee trying to do all the things that you need to do, like your life isn't busy enough anyway, and then you double or triple the expectations of all of the Santas and Mrs. Clauses and workshop things that we have to do. So what do you do at night? Well, you order takeout or bring it back home and have some more hyper palatable food, except this time it has a store franchise logo on it and not somebody's homemade um, goodies filled with fats and white flour and chemicals, right? I mean, I remember the little weenies in grape jam or grape jelly in like a fondue thing. Do you remember that stuff? Is there one thing that's nutritious about those things? No! And whoever thought that eating a hot dog that's been marinating in grape jelly, <laughs> oh my god, is like the green bean casserole. It's like you know, and you use canned beans. I mean, it's just crazy what we put into our bodies that is now so... I mean, maybe in the old days there was some nutrition in some of these things, but today it's just awful. So then you've got a Saturday night food bomb because you were so busy that you're going to have a day two of hyperpalatable foods. And what day was it that you were going to go back to tracking and weighing and measuring and being obedient to whatever your food plan is so you don't gain 10, 15, 20 pounds. Oh, it's just water weight. Well, guess what? It's not going to be. Okay? Get over yourselves. So, anyway, um, the composition... Oh, I was listening to this man on this. He was being interviewed, and he has a book coming out in February called The Hungry Brain, and his name is Stefan. And so he said that one of the things about switching up to eating nutritionally dense foods is they're not going to have that hyper palatability that, um, you know, a chicken breast and a bowl of bro uh, broccoli um, is not going to be as tasty as uh, the waffle with the scrambled eggs. And they might even be fake scrambled eggs. You just don't know. It's not going to be, because the chemists are in there making that highly palatable food, not to mention the sentimental value we put on something. You know, he was talking about, um, he was talking about 
like McDonald's and how it conjures up maybe happy memories with little kids and Happy Meals. And so when we go in there, we're lulled back into thinking of a safer, easier, less stressful, maybe weighing less time. And uh, what we've done to our food since the 70s in America is just, it's just horrible. And so many people are being duped. And um, he also said that if you're obese, there's a real chance that you're eating 300 more calories every day than you need. And 300 calories times 7 is 2,100 calories. So you're on your way to gaining a pound a week, um, whereas you know a pound has 3,500 calories in it. But um, the average American is getting 220 more calories in their standard American diet. But if you're obese, you're eating in the um, area of 300 more calories a day. And as I've said in other podcasts, a soda could be just the tipping point. You know, the 20-ounce things of um, Coca-Cola, uh, a 12-ounce can has um, 100 and 50 calories. So an eight ounce serving is a hundred. And so when you get up to that 20 ounce dog, you're talking about 240 calories, I think it is. Pure sugar, pure high fructose corn syrup. And if it was only made with real sugar, it would be better for you. But the high fructose has, it, it comes from corn, it comes from GMO corn, and it just wreaks havoc inside of your body because it goes straight to one organ. It doesn't even enter into others because of the high fructose part about it that sugar at least would be processed differently. I don't know enough about it. I'm not a chemist. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm a formerly fat little girl that um, spent 40 decades trying to get it, 40 decades, four decades, four or five decades trying to get it right. So losing that taste for the um, standard American diet, all the crap that they put in the food, all the chemicals and flavorings that are going to make you addicted to it is going to be different when you switch off to like an organic chicken breast with the steamed broccoli with a pat of Kerrygold grass-fed butter on it. Sure, it's going to feel different, taste different, because it is different. Um, now, when it talks about so I can't really understand this, but, you know, um, conditioned overeating. In Dr. David Kessler's book, The End of Overeating, Taking Control of the Insatiable American Appetite, he's the former head of the FDA. And <laughs> former, there's your key. So now he can be honest, right? Um, he claims that the food industry has combined and created foods in a way that taps into our brain circuitry, thus stimulating our desire for more. And um, on their own, these ingredients aren't particularly potent, but when combined in specific ways, they tap into the brain's reward system. Exactly. So, um, the um, beginning of the article is, if you're eating these hyperpalatable foods, you could become addicted to them. And so it says, is it really addiction at the end? It's just a conditioned hyper-eating, and it, it's... It shows that it may be capable of triggering an addictive process, not unlike illicit drugs, alcohol, gambling. So some scientists say yes. Um, you know, I tend to rely a lot on what peers say. You know, somebody that's been in the trenches with their own um, hyper-eating, overeating, hyper-palatability issues, or just plain old food addiction, which is what I call it. And a food addiction for me is that obsessive thinking 24-7 about something that I shouldn't be eating until I satisfy that craving. Because what happens is when that craving starts going, the only way it's going to be fed is to be fed, right? And so when I watch videos of other peers that struggle, 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 you know, follow a food plan with perhaps no sugar or grains and then cave to the sugar and grains, it's like they have to start all over again each time. And their body is saying, what the heck? What are you doing to me? You know, one minute you're, you're, you're doing this thing and the scale is, you know, going down and you're, you're satiated and you're talking about it and you're enjoying it and you're making the recipes that fit. And then in the next minute, you're, 
you're derailing. I don't mean to laugh because I've been there and done it so many times. And so it's so hard to go without and then start going with and having as a treat and then going back to the starting point again. And there's, it's like withdrawing. It's like no different than going on a, you know, you don't see people that go on heroin for a weekend, a long weekend, a wedding of one of their childhood friends. And so they say, I'm just going to do heroin for the weekend, and then I'm going to go back to, you know, being clean and sober and attending NA and AA meetings, and everything will be just fine. It doesn't work that way. You know, we, we might not be that lucky that we can come back. And so being, for me, the point that I always try to stress is the fear of missing out, FOMO. And the FOMO that I want is feeling clean with my food program, being abstinent with my food program, honoring my food program, and not swerving off because it's a special occasion and I can have it. No, I can't. How many times have I caved to that thing that is totally addictive for me, totally triggering for me, totally, totally takes me out of my body? And so it's going to be a hyperpalatable food. If I know that I can't eat ice cream, if I know that I can't eat cookies, if I know that I can't eat substitutes of cookies and ice cream, and then those two cakes that those two cake flavors that took me down um, when I entered Weight Watchers in 2014, if I know they took me down then, do I think it's going to be any different? This time, no. I can't bring them into the house and eat them in safety. I can't. I have a food problem. And I don't know if you guys have a food problem. You can identify it yourself. But if you have issues surrounding certain food items, you may have a food problem. And if you have issues surrounding those food items and you have them, you're going to have to withdraw. There is a hangover involved. It's not fun, it's not pretty, and it really is messing with your brain and your, your um, digestive system, especially if you've been true to a food program for a while. But that overload, it just, it just is so self-sabotaging in so many ways, on your insides and also in your head and with your momentum, and I want you to keep your momentum. So if you go out to a party and you celebrate with all kinds of hyper-palatable foods, and the next day you're a crazy maniac go running around trying to get everything done, you know, getting the house decorated, getting the tree up, getting the things that you usually make for other people. Like say you're a mom and you have to cook for kids for school parties, and they send you a list of what you can't do, no peanut butter cookies please with the Hershey's Kiss, and things like that, so you're trying to find recipes that work, and blah, 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 blah. You know, and then you have a hyper-palatable dinner, because you didn't have time to do a crock pot or a, a cooking a dinner in a foil or using an instant pot or even just baking a chicken breast and, and adding a side of broccoli and a side of green beans because your body will love you for that, but it doesn't seem very rewarding for all the hard work you've done. Stop. Breathe. Take care of yourself. Prioritize yourself through all of this craziness that we've got going on right now and you know what I'm talking about and you know how easy it is to think I'm just doing it because well don't take care excuse me take care of yourselves you are the most important thing and if you aren't setting the example for your family and you're caving to every hyper palatable thing at a party or a gathering and then the next day you know, dialing that number, you know, making reservations or having it delivered and dropped off and yeah, give me the two liter of something, something and having all of those things back in the house, you know, you're hurting yourself and you don't want to hurt yourself and your family doesn't need hyper palatability food. They don't need it either. And so you want to set the example for more than just yourself if you live with other people and they're littler than you and you're called a parent you want to teach them how to have sane eating even after a busy day. It isn't just reward, reward, reward. Standard American diet is very rewarding and it's so easy to do. 
you call ahead, you order online, you swing through, you can go through the takeout and, you know, the drive through You've got on your jammies and you've got on your slippers with the bunny face in the front. And you can pick up that stuff for $40 or $50 instead of feeding yourself for three days with organic grass-fed items. Do it if you want, but just know that you might be happier if you're not doing it. And you know that if you did it before, how happy and clean you felt. Not smug and arrogant and perfect, but your body loves you. You love you. And really, does it take that long to do a steam bag of green beans or broccoli? With a, Even get a rotisserie chicken. I mean, you know, it's going to have all those chemicals and stuff in it. Even Whole Foods has an organic rotisserie chicken. Is it expensive? Yes, but a whole lot expensive, say, with two veggie bags. Um, you know, you're going to spend 20 bucks for a rotisserie chicken. Then you're going to have the bones and you can make a nice chicken soup right? You can do all of that. It's organic. It's good for you. Or you can spend 40 or 50 at the takeout, have all that stuff, maybe even have some of the stuff left over. So it's sitting on the counter talking to you. Hi, I'm breadsticks. Hi, I'm, I'm sugar-free soda. That would make a great lunch, wouldn't it? No. Well, I'm going to add a can of tomato soup. Oh, look at the sugar that's in that can of tomato soup. I make tomato soup in my Instant Pot. It's delish. No, I'm not adding sugar. It's tomatoes. It's heavy cream. It's salt and pepper. It's Kerrygold butter. Maybe even a little cream cheese. And it is divine. And I'm not using artificial thickeners. I'm not using any of those um, shake-in things that are filled with chemicals. It is pure. It is not a hyperpalatable but it says to your taste buds, wow, organic tomato soup never tasted this good. Oh yeah, I add basil too. So anyway, this has been a bit of a smackdown and it's gone on and on and on. Hyper palatable foods. Look it up. Check it out. See if ev even the visual of like what I saw with the waffle folded with the scrambled egg with the bunches of bacon on top with the high fructose corn syrup poured on top of it. See if that doesn't light up your brain and how you have to like deprogram because it's like, oh, I haven't eaten like that in 10 years. Why, why am I suddenly thinking that an IHOP meal will be good for me? It won't be. It's no different than before, except maybe worse because more chemicals and less of the good stuff, right? I care about you guys. Take care of yourselves. This has been Sarah Pearls of Wisdom and Food, Smackdown. Bye-bye for now.